to two minutes of Torah. This year is entitled The Greatest Rehabilitation in History of Mankind. Four questions I'd like to ask on Parshat Bo and truth on the whole exodus from Egypt. It says in Parshat Bo that God says, Moshe, you're going to go ahead and watch, and your children are going to go tell their children how I mocked the Egyptians. Fine, we had to leave Egypt. Why mocking Egypt? Why did that have to be part of the Exodus story? Number two, Moshe is told by God, please ask for money. The Jews need to ask for money and gold when they leave Egypt. So why do we have to ask for money and gold when we leave Egypt? That's an important value that God wants to set up. Number three, the Medrash says that God told Moshe, you need to ask for money and gold. Why? Because I promised the Tavram at the Brit Bit of Tarim that they're going to become slaves, the Jews, and then they'll leave with money and gold and silver. So do it because Avram's asking me. So that seems to be not really the reason to do it. God made a promise he should do it because of that. And then finally, it says very quickly, they emptied out Egypt. It's one thing for the Jews to get the gold and silver that they need, but why empty out Egypt? Why did that have to be? So Rav Cook says it was very important for the Jews to really leave Egypt where there's no attraction to Egypt anymore. And they don't want to go back. And they look at Egypt as a destroyed, downtrodden country. And it needed to be emptied out, not just in order for the Jews to get the gold and silver, but for the Jews to look at this as a, a disgusting place, they will lose the attraction. And Rabbi Cook explains that's why it says in the Gloran Brachot that it was like Egypt was like a net without fish and a like trap without bait, meaning it just didn't have the appeal anymore. That's what part of the goal was, for the Jews to go ahead and not have that attraction to Egypt anymore. In addition to that, it would seem that Avram said to God, I understand you're going to make them into slaves and it's going to galvanize the people into one nation. I see the benefits to that, but but and they're going to be slaves even when you take them out. How do you take the slavery out of the Jewish people? So God says, I have a rehabilitation program. They're going to go ahead. They're going to see a decimated Egypt. They're going to see their own masters totally subservient to them. Please go. What do you need? Take the gold, the silver, take my clothing, take whatever you want. And they're going to go ahead and be leaving with heads high. And they're not going to be leaving in a downtrodden way. Because you're right, Avram. A group that slaves, that really affects them in a very negative way, their psyche. Just this past week, or maybe now in America, this week, the Martin Luther King uh, Day. And uh, celebrating his life and his cause, what are you saying? It's just not right. Why should the blacks be subservient in America? Why should they go ahead? They can't run on a bus like everyone else. Can't drink from the fountains. What, what is the history of the blacks in America? This is horrible. And the fact is, all those years that they're so downtrodden, okay, and segregated into racism, that, that has an effect on, on people. And he was totally right. A, among other things, right, it's just not just, which is why so many Jews were involved in his cause, because it was not just. And, and it has an effect on a psyche. It's not fair. And God, Avram said to God that that's an issue here. And God says, I have an amazing rehabilitation program. And that's why they're going to leave Egypt. It's going to be a mockery Egypt. It's going to be emptied out. They're going to be leaving with heads held high, wearing expensive clothing, gold and silver, feeling good about themselves. And that's going to give them the ability to overcome that slavery. And it was successful. The first generation didn't make it, that's true. But they were able to at least the next generation, which means the 19-year-olds who came out of Egypt, because the decree was from 20 and above to stay in the Midbar and die there, which means 19 years on the below who were in Egypt, they were conquering Israel. And you say, oh, come on, they didn't conquer Israel. God made all the miracles of Jericho and the, sun, the hand, rocks coming down from the sky and the sun standing still, still and the Jordan River miraculously separating for them. It was all miracles. They weren't fighting. This wasn't a case of Sahal. Not true. We just mentioned all the miracles in the Bible of Yeshua. Crossing the Jordan, the walls of Jericho, 
the sun standing still and the rocks coming down. All the other wars were the Jews fighting the wars. It was a siyata deshmaya, God helping, of course. But was it open miracles like the walls of Yericho? No, just like today in Israel, Sahal is fighting unbelievable wars, defending us with siyata deshmaya. But there's real war going on. And that's what was going on in the book of Yeshua. And who was fighting the wars? The people that left Egypt, 19 years old and below, and their children. That's an amazing, amazing development. That is great rehabilitation. And I think that rehabilitation and that ability to recreate ourselves is in our DNA. Downtrodden for 2,000 years, go through the Holocaust, and we turn around, we create our own state, world leading in so many areas. So I think that ability to resuscitate ourselves, rehabilitate ourselves, Hashem planted in us as we left Egypt, and it's in us, we have to show forever, that we should always be able to rebuild and just go from strength to strength, and even to go from Gehenna to Chaya as well, from the worst tragedies to strength as well. Shalom.